Hello, welcome back to GBBS Games Broadcast and Bullshit with uh, Nick and Wendy. I'm Wendy, how you doing? Uh, I am a broadcaster on Twitch, twitch.tv slash bravochick, and I'm on Twitter at bravochick10, and I am also now on uh, the old Instagram on at the bravochick10. Yeah, bravochick10 actually... on Instagram, let's go! On Instagram, <laughs> I've actually been on Instagram for a very, very, very long time. I was going to do a new account, but... I've ne I, me and Instagram don't play nice, so I just ended up using my old Instagram. So there's a bunch of, I think there's maybe three new posts, and then there's a ton of older posts. I think the last time I posted on there, I don't know, it was like 2014 or 2015, but... Oh my it's god. There if, yeah, so if you want to do it, go check it out. But anyway, uh, who who is this good-looking thing over here? Who are you? What are you talking about? I am Nick, <laughs> also known as Nickinator15. On the interwebs, all right? That's Twitch, mm -hmm. YouTube, uh, Twitter, and TikTok, and uh, there's a lot of things you can go and, and look at Nickinator15 on. Except for Instagram, I'm the real say, Nickinator. The real Nickinator. Yeah. The okay. real Nickinator. Not the fake one, the, the real one. Not the fake one, because I guess Nickinator15 was already taken or no. something? Is that what happened? <laughs> Uh, so you, you came up and saying there, you know, Instagram don't play well with you. And, uh, it mm, turns out yeah. Instagram actually don't play well with me, uh, either. Uh, I made a Nickinator15 account on Instagram and someone took it over. Somebody oh got gosh. into my profile, took it over, changed the password, changed the profile no. picture, and I don't have access to it anymore. So darn, I made, darn it. made a new one and That's I decided awful. the real Nickinator. I thought it was pretty funny, so... That is just terrible. That is just terrible. But anyway, um, yeah, slight little change. Uh, we are going from games books and BS to games broadcast and BS. After some feedback, um, it seems like the book section isn't as interesting. So um, I think we'll probably, you know, we're still going to read in our, yes. you know, pat off time. And we may even read the same book together, you know, in the future. I'm sure that's going to happen again, and but we'll yep. talk about that in the BS section, and it won't be as as big of a segment. Um, and, uh, you know, since we're GBBS, I was like, hmm, we need another B to yeah, go before so. the BS. So I was like, well, we're both broadcasters, so that kind of works. It does so work out. Now games, yeah, games broadcast and bullshit. So, um, as we go through this, uh, you know, we're not... We're not all, you know, professionals around here, okay? We, we, we like to not. think we are sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, this podcasting thing, it's, uh, it's a learning experience for the both of us as well. And, uh, fifth you know. episode, you know, what? we're not professionals by the fifth episode. What? Yeah, right. Come on now. So as we go through, you know, we, we might see some changes happen. And uh, mm -hmm. this is one of our first major changes in, in, the, in the podcast. So uh, Yeah, absolutely. No, and it's, so, uh, it is based on feedback. So we do listen to you guys. Absolutely. And, uh, you know. So. If you want to give us some feedback, drop us some feedback at uh, gbbspodcast at gmail.com. We've actually got mail to read when we get to that segment today, so that's going to be a lot I'm, of fun. Oh, exciting. <laughs> so, um, the previous episode, uh, Nick had played Stray from cover to cover, and it took, what, about five hours? Four hours? Four and a half. half hours, something like that. Yep. Quick and easy. Um, Just banged it out, you know? I was a kitty really cat for game. for a short period of time. All yeah, right, <laughs> really cute game. Like yeah. uh, I enjoyed watching uh, Nick play it, and then I was like, "Well, I kind of know the story, so I don't really need to buy it and play it now myself." Which I'm kind of okay with, you know. It's like I sometimes I do that. Sometimes I'm like, you know, I'd like to play that game, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, "When am I ever going to play that game?" So, I'll, oh, my good friend Nick here, he's going to play it. I'm just going to watch him be a kitty cat for a little while, man. Meow. Yeah, if you're looking to, you know. <laughs> Watch through it. You haven't watched it yet. You know, somebody play it. Uh, I do have it uploaded on my Let's Play channel on YouTube. So that's Nickinator YouTube. Let's Plays. And uh, there's, I don't know, nine or ten parts. I think it's nine. What? Uh, uh, maybe we can link your new uh, Let's Play channel, like, down below. Yeah, I'll figure something out. Something like that. Yeah. And um, uh, basically, it's it's up there in, in the good 1440p goodness. So it's in really good quality. Mm. Really high quality, yeah, because you, you want to see the kitty cat in really good quality. You yeah, know you I mean? want to see all the little um, hairs and, and everything, the whiskers. <laughs> oh, yeah, you yeah. got to see that. The cute little so. uh, paw prints it leaves behind sometimes. Just oh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that was a really interesting, very fun game. So, absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's see. So we covered Spider Man Remastered. How that's coming to the PC, right? Yeah, in like one week. I think it's coming out in one week now. Really, that quick? Oh yeah. Holy cow. Yeah. Okay. Wow, I didn't realize it was going to be that quick. Well, you that's keep reading awesome. here. I'm going to take a look at the exact date. Okay. Uh, we finished and wrapped up on such a quiet place. I really enjoyed that book. Um, I was just a little disappointed on the ending. Like, the ending was fine. It just felt a little rushed. Right, yeah. So, oh well. Do you have a release date for Spider? Yeah, <laughs> one week. On the 12th of August is the, there you the go. date there. So, one week. So, is that like one week from today, then? Uh, tomorrow. Oh, one week. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's So, it comes out fun. on Friday. So, for them listening on, on the you know podcast, not live, on the release date of the podcast, it is one week from then. One week from today, if you're listening to this on your uh, favorite uh, podcast platform there, and, uh, we would appreciate a five-star rating. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, what have you been playing this uh, here lately there, Nick? Okay, so you and I went through and played A Way Out. That was mm -hmm. uh, definitely a fun experience. That was a blast. I had so much fun. And I can't wait to play through It Takes Two. Um, mm -hmm. Probably next weekend or something like that, yep. uh, depending mm -hmm. on how it goes. You know, maybe Sunday or something. We'll play through It Takes Two. But a way out was uh, very interesting, you know, having a side by side screen and and you know, uh, going through that story and um, basically escaping prison is what it's about. So it um, is. I knew about a way out. I had never watched a lot of footage of it just because I knew it was something I wanted to play. So uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was a really good time, and I do believe um, it may not be up there net uh, yet, but I do believe Nick is going to add that footage to his. Uh, YouTube channel as well. Yeah, I'm going to get around to that. Um, you know, I've just kind of relaxed and, you know, I've, I've got some Far Cry up there now, but, you know, A Way Out mm -hmm. will be next. Um, uh, what I was going to say about A Way Out is what's really cool about that game is only one person has to purchase it. And the other That's person right. that you're playing That's with right, yeah. just has to download a friend pass and mm -hmm. you guys can play side really by side. Cool. So. Really cool. I think we should play it where uh, we reverse the character so I get to... You know, I'm not going to spoil anything, but see what the other ending is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there it is like a game where you choose and have different outcomes on yeah. certain things. So, I always thought those games were so cool. I always thought that would be a neat premise for a like a television series. Say they write two scripts, you know, a week, and then they do like a poll, and like the audience of said show votes, and you don't, but you don't know which one wins until you watch the next. Uh, next week's episode, but I guess they would have to shoot it during the week, whereas I think nowadays they kind of shoot it all at once and then edit it, and then it comes out like six months later. Yeah, something, something like, that. like that, right? It goes through a lot of, you know, process and everything, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I do think there is, like, shows you can watch or a movie you can watch on Netflix or something that you make choices, and it changes yeah. the outcome of the show, but, but what you Would actually said is really interesting. Cool. I'd never even thought of that, so... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Another thing that we've been playing together is the Grand Utopia. We played a little bit of yes. that last week. On Euro Truck Simulator, it's a modded fantasy map in a one-to-one -one scale. And uh, the economy on that is a lot more realistic. Whereas, you know, on Euro Truck Simulator, American Truck Simulator, you do four jobs, you can buy a truck, basically. Yeah. Um, where Versus Grand Utopia... You're not buying a truck when you do just four little jobs. It's not going to work right. like that. So it's it's more um, more tough, and there's a bit more realism in there, and I, I really enjoy it. I'm definitely going to be uh, doing some more of that here. The map is very Soon. interesting. Like, it yeah. has really cool roads you can go on, you know, mm -hmm. bendy, wavy roads in, like, a mountain, basically. And, you know, it's a very it's cool map. It's gorgeous as well. It's yeah. a gorgeous-looking map. Yep. Uh, You've also been uh, kind of on a, a, a train of uh, Factorio. There, oh, my God. <laughs> I already knew. I'm like, I, I had it in my mind. I'm like, you know, what? I might pick pick up Factorio again, start playing it. But <laughs> I, I already knew. I'm like, if I press play button on Factorio, yep. there's going to be no going back. It's going to be a, a rabbit hole that I jump into and I'm going to be stuck to it for a while. Mm -hmm. And here I am. I got in the past two weeks almost 100 hours on the game. Holy and, cow. you know, so I'm, <laughs> I, I've been pumping up the game a little bit, but I've been playing the space exploration mod pack on that. Yeah. Um, 
which adds it's a whole overhaul to the game but it allows you mm-hmm. to basically go to other planets and gather the resources from there and each planet's different they got their own resources and stuff kind of like uh dyson sphere program but in cool. like a factorial world so right. it's very cool and uh it's supposedly an average of about a thousand hours to complete the whole mod pack holy moly i don't think i'll ever complete the mod pack but it's <laughs> oh, uh <laughs> come on have a little faith in yourself yeah it's just you know being stuck to factorial for a while there's, there's so many other games i do want to play so we'll see we'll see i'm it's probably something I'm, I'm gonna end up doing you know uh streaming a couple nights a week or something on like evenings and stuff the thing with something like that and i'm sure a lot of people run into this problem when i start playing something like that and then you know i'll get burnout or whatever and i'll walk away from it for a little while And when mm-hmm. i go back i'm like what was i even doing i have no idea i'm just <laughs> gonna start over you know yeah so yeah that feels like one of those uh scenarios i have i had that when i get off for the night i come back the next day i was like what was i doing when i got off and then i gotta <laughs> you know get going again and figure it all out but yeah i know that space exploration mod pack uh if you have not played factorial do not recommend doing that mod pack I recommend playing through the entire vanilla game first before yeah from the mods. what i can tell it's a pretty technical uh mod pack um, the game in itself is technical <laughs> so i was gonna say I've watched Nick and and a few others play Factorio, and I know I can never play that game because I'm like, I don't know what is going on in this game. So you take that, and then you put a highly technical mod pack on top. I really wouldn't know what was going on. I'd be like, uh, what? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, um, best game of all time. Let's be real now. (laughs) (laughs) I'd go that far. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I know a lot of people enjoy that game, and I'm glad you're enjoying it there, Nick. That's yeah. Good. That's a good, good deal. I've seen you um, on a game stream, huh? Yeah, uh, apart from playing Way Out With You and doing some uh, Grand Utopia on your truck simulator. So I've been playing Dinkum, uh, this really cute game. It's like Animal Crossing come uh, Stardew Valley. You're basically, you s- land on this uh, new island, and uh, you start up your own colony, basically. And it's just a cute little chill game, and I love it so much. Um, I don't play it in my downtime. I only play it when I stream. So I really want to get back to streaming it here soon. Because it's a lot of fun. I didn't get into Factorial like I did, I would definitely still be playing uh, more Dinkum. And it just reminds me, I do want to open that game up again at some point. But there is many updates planned. Like, it's going to be awesome. Like, that game's still expanding. And it has exactly one developer. Yeah, we're going to talk about that in a little bit in in the gaming news section. Right. Um, uh, some games that are uh, coming out soon. Uh, we have mentioned Spider-Man last episode. I just want to bring it up again because yep. it is in one week. So that's coming mm-hmm. out soon. And I may pick it up. I still haven't decided that yet. I'll decide on the day it comes out if I'm going to grab it or not. Uh, mm-hmm. I've always wanted to play Spider-Man. And you know, I don't have a PlayStation. And now that it's coming to PC... So yeah, with uh, that being new, that might be some good content for the YouTubes, you know. Yeah, maybe and we'll see. Twitch. Like, uh, it's very interesting, uh, mm-hmm. very highly rated game. Like, I think it was one of the most like sold games on PlayStation when it came out or something. Did it win Game of the Year? It or didn't win Game of the Year because God of War came out the same time, I think, and you know, God right, of War right. took that cake. So, uh, otherwise, I think it would have if it wasn't for God of War. So. And then. Uh... Hogwarts Legacy is on here, and I can't wait. That is one thing I'm looking forward to. Yeah, Hogwarts Legacy is uh, later this year, but uh, just is something... it later this year? I got. I thought it got pushed to next. Uh, oh, I next I could year. be I could be behind the times on the news here. Is it next year? I don't know. <laughs> I thought it got pushed to next year. We'll figure that out and uh, update you in the next episode. Right. Um. I have um then... I have a little bit of a question for you, which is interesting. Yeah. Because I've. I've I want to talk about this because I was thinking about okay. this last week and uh, I just wanted to know if there were to be like your dream game, okay? Yeah. You were to able to create or ask for your perfect game. What mm-hmm. would it be? Like what would you want in a game? As someone that primarily wears a simulation hat when she games, it would be an everything simulator. That is open world that everyone could join the same world and work towards. So basically, 
you're a farmer, you grow the products. You need, you know, then you have a trucker that comes and picks up your 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 raw products and they drops it off at the grain mill. And then maybe right. another trucker comes in and picks up the flour and takes it to the distribution center. And then, like, it ends up on big cargo planes that fly it all around the world. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Something loose. And, like, like, trains that, in there, too. Show. Like, you got a yeah, train network. Train. And... Hell yeah. Yeah, no, uh, mine would totally Maybe be the same like thing. Maybe shop simulator as well, you know? It's like, this person wants to run a shop so they can sell these goods in their shop, you know? It would be, that's that's kind of the gist of my perfect game, I guess. So what this game play? would be called would be uh, Real Life Simulator, basically. Where you... <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, yeah. but something sort of... But yeah, no, tie in all the simulators, you know, so you kind of have like uh, all in one like economy system and you got to kind of, you know, work out like, um, you know, supply and demand almost, you know, say, you know, one area is requesting more like a certain crop or something. The farmers would have to, you know, farm that and send it out. Maybe even bid on it, you know, they want, um, you know, 50 tons of cotton. Then that's going to be dropped off at the t-shirt factory. And then they're going to sell these t-shirts in this man's store. So, Maybe you'd have to bid on that, and you know you'd have like a a time period to bid on these contracts. Yeah, no, and that that would, I, that would essentially go for everything from the farming to the distribution to the uh, stores as well. Could be really. Cool. Yeah, I think that would be awesome. And what would make it even more neat is if they use the world kind of like um, Flight Simulator does right now, mm-hmm. and you could pick your region of the world scale. to do it. Yeah. Right. That would so be really awesome. You know. You, you, um, I don't know how they would like do it exactly with like the farms and everything. I'm sure they'd figure out a way to, you know, calculate. There's a farm here via the maps right. or something, and you know you can farm on that field. So you pick that yeah. area, and obviously, like mm-hmm. as simulators are right now, you wouldn't be tied to that area. You can kind of just move around wherever, like yeah. fast travel or whatever. But when you yeah. pick that area, it is a one-to-one scale when you're actually that playing would be the game. So cool. And you know you you deliver to the nearest train station or truck depot or whatever, and and yeah, that would no. be so freaking cool. Like you could get your friends in on it, and maybe you know this person says they're going to be a farmer, that person's going to be a trucker, and that person's going to sell the goods. You know, it could it would be I think it would be a blast, but it would be a huge huge undertaking because something like that would have to be done right. Yeah, you couldn't have pass it. Yeah, you know, no way. But no, I've uh, I've definitely heard that before. I've heard it multiple times that people would love a game like that. We're tying all I would the simulators. Love a game like that. Yes. And actually, 100%. so uh, I was watching Giant Waffle last mm-hmm. week, and this is where I came across this idea, and he was talking about it, and that was his exact, um, <laughs> his exact uh, ideal game. Yeah. With the tie in all the simulators, so I thought that was pretty cool. So that is pretty cool. For those listening, if you have an ideal game or a, a dream game, basically, there that you, you would love to see, let us know. Email us, gbbspodcast right. at gmail.com. Did we get that right? There you go. The we, yeah, that's <laughs> it. We would love to hear from you. Yeah. Um, I guess we will move on to the gaming news portion. Um, let's see here. So the aforementioned Dinkum is, uh, is going to come to consoles after early access. Uh, however, there is some questionable uh, cross-platform is in question. It's it's doubtful that it will be cross-platform. Right. But before it even uh, comes to console, um, the solo developer Binden uh, plans to introduce a Steam Cloud safe system, uh, seasonal events. Ooh, that sounds fun. And uh, a greater selection of characters, animals, clothing, and items. So, yeah, it's going to be on console. Don't look for it anytime soon. Um, He's got a little bit of a, a roadmap actually on there. Oh, if you've does looked, he? Cool. if you looked on the Steam page, yeah, I think yeah. there's a roadmap somewhere. Um, yeah, I'll have to go check that out. Yeah, no, there's definitely he, he talks about you know more animals and different things he he's planning on adding. So, but yeah, yeah. solo dev is a uh, very interesting undertaking to do on a game. But I think the smaller the dev, the more they listen to community feedback. And uh, their their vision for the game doesn't get muddied up by corporate money, right? So yeah, you know, or or a time constraint. 
Yeah. Um, Grand Theft Auto 6 will feature the first playable female character. It is said that the female character will be a Latina. Um, Rockstar also plans to release more locations over time through updates. So that's going to be pretty fun. I also, like, read something, take this with a grain of salt, but something about how they wanted to do a new city, but time constraints is... Um, they've decided to fall back on uh, returning to Vice City. Um, but that being said, it sounds like it may, we may start with Vice City and then get more cities over time or something like that. That could be kind of cool. Maybe you go to the airport and you could fly to whatever the next city is. So that could be pretty cool. Rockstar is known for actually keeping pretty quiet on their games. Mm -hmm. Except for that they'll put out like, you know, small rumors leaks mm -hmm. and get mm -hmm. community feedback on them uh, right. but they will never confirm anything uh, and then right and then they'll come out with a trailer and stuff uh to get everybody hyped about the game and it's and usually doesn't out within that a year. usually come i was gonna say doesn't it it's still like even though there's a trailer it'll be like six months before the game comes out or something like yeah that. um they're, they're good at staying quiet on official news but the leaks, there will always be leaks about the game. And they tend right. to be actually be true because it's rocks are actually leaking it to gauge community right. feedback. So, Right, which is pretty cool. And I'm, I've am i always uh, wanted like some kind of female playable character in the story mode, so or the storyline rather. So that is going to be a lot of fun. I'm really excited about that. Hell yeah. GTA 6 is um, going to be a great game. Oh, I cannot wait, <laughs> you know. The only one I didn't really care too much for was San Andreas, which I know because that's a lot of people's favorite. Um, <laughs> and my favorite is 4 because I love Nico Bellic. 4 was a really great game. Like the story in that oh, one was, was amazing. Really, yeah. I would love to replay that really game. Good. So I do need to do the story mode for 5 though. I got like, I got to the point right where Trevor gets introduced and then... Um, you didn't play through the Trevor storyline? No, oh my no. God. <laughs> well, I started playing multiplayer yeah. uh, with my nephew, and I just never went back. So maybe one day I'll finish that uh, that storyline. Um, back to the news. Microsoft is piloting a new feature for Xbox insiders to share their past subscriptions with four other people. Now, while this does sound pretty cool and pretty awesome, don't get excited. Uh because as of right now it's only a feature in colombia and ireland uh, so hopefully that becomes you know like worldwide because that sounds like a pretty cool uh, little plan where you yeah. could, you know share ass and whatnot we'll see how that you know works out you know usually mm -hmm. they do want their money in some way shape or form so that's true uh, i read something along the lines of like uh the way it sounded to me was like basically you're paying for a subscription, said subscription is X amount of time, and it, you can share it with up to four people, but that could eat into, I guess, however long you have your subscription or something along those lines. Right, who, yeah. who, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Uh, what about this World War II Rebuilder? Yeah, I played a little bit of a demo for it. Uh, definitely yeah. interesting game where, you know, you clean up a city after... You know, World War Two has kind of bombarded the city, you know, all the you know, guns yeah. and, and all that stuff. And it's kind of, cool. you know, falling apart or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you come in, you clean up and rebuild it, basically. Uh, you can, like, repaint walls and do certain things and, and add in your own decorations and whatnot. And it reminds me of House Flipper. Uh, yeah. Which is another, another a game where you go in and clean up a house and then mm -hmm. make it look all pretty again. But World War II style. Uh, so definitely interesting. I, that does sound interesting. I think they went wrong with not having it a multiplayer, though. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think if they were that as a multiplayer game, they would have had more success. Yeah, uh, it is easier to make a single-player game. I do get it. Um, like, especially yeah. if you're a f small company. Like, it is a lot harder to integrate multiplayer properly. Um, yeah. But, yeah... Multiplayer does make a lot of games better, but <laughs> I, agree. Know, I definitely like, have um, a lot of uh, I think examples. it extends the lifetime of games as well, because if TM Truckers MP hadn't have came out and delivered a multiplayer for Eurotrack Simulator 2, I don't know if I ever would have played it, and 
I don't know if American Truck Simulator ever would have been a thing, you know? Like, right. having that mod, that multiplayer mod, uh, speaks to the longevity of the trucking simulator, I feel. And as the, like, it's being such a big mod and, and holding a, quite a community together, I've never understood why SCS didn't, like, connect with Truckers MP and make sure when an update comes out that they're ready. I've, I, oh, I've, I know. I've never understood why that was never a thing, but nonetheless... You know. Like, um, SCS did a really good job of holding um, their tongue when it came to their multiplayer. Right. Like, uh, I don't think anyone's seen that coming. It was just out of the blue, you know, beta you could opt into and yep. you know, play multiplayer. I always thought, like, I just knew SCS would eventually end up buying Truckers MP since they already have the infrastructure. And that would be the official multiplayer of SCS. But... You know, now we're well into, you know, post SCS convoy mode. And um, while I don't think SCS convoy mode has affected much on the Euro Truck Simulator side, it has definitely affected the American Truck Simulator side, as the majority mm -hmm. of American Truck Simulator players stick to the convoy mode because the um, ATS server for Truckers MP is pretty dead these days, which is kind of sad, but, you know, understandable. Well, the convoy mode, like, it allows you to add in mods and, like, yeah. all sorts of Play you know, with good stuff. Yeah, traffic involved in there. You can kind of mm -hmm. customize, and you can still, like, teleport around easy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just, you know, has all the features yeah. inside the single-player game and multiplayer. Whereas, you know. The only, uh, yeah, the only holdback right now, I'd say, with SS convoy mode is uh, the limit of players. You know, it's, it's yeah. capped at 8 right now. I'd love to see that, you know, at least doubled. Um, so there, th that's why I still feel like there is a viable reason to have Truckers MP just for the mere fact once you get over eight people or really seven plus you, the host, you're going to have to go to Truckers MP anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, sticking to the trucking thing, Montana DLC released today. That's right. Uh, can't wait. Going to be getting into some of that, uh, here after the podcast tonight. Yes. Right after the podcast, we're actually going to be playing some, some of the DLC so if you're interested yeah. in checking that out and you're listening to the podcast on a podcasting platform, check us out on Twitch, where we stream these kind of games. Bravo Chick Twitch. and Nicknator15. Check it out on Twitch. There you go. Yeah, check us out. And um, come convoy with us. It'd be a, it'd be a really good time. Yeah. So. Now, I've, I've, I've been hearing, I don't have too much information on this, but I've been hearing rumors of The Sims 5, which what? is interesting. Really? Yeah. I've... And, I knew that there was speculation that it was time for Sims 5. Right. And considering their latest DLC, the high school or whatever, and considering how big of a flop it was, I would say it's time for a Sims 5. Yeah. No, I, I definitely think, like, uh, the Sims 5 has been confirmed, I think I'm, I've been reading, and that it's going to feature some kind of multiplayer is what I'm reading. But I'm not sure how true the, the news is on that. But, you uh, have my interest. You have piqued my interest. Yeah. So that, if The Sims that, comes out with multiplayer, that would be the ultimate Sims game if they did everything else yeah. right. That's that was one thing I always said. Like, um, if Sims Four would like have had multiplayer integration, I'd still be playing it to today. But since they took all the features away, or a lot of the features from Sims Three to Sims Four, like the open world, um, cars, garages, stuff like that. And went back to these tiny little worlds and really didn't introduce a new factor in, like a multiplayer integration. I was like, they subtracted and didn't add anything, therefore it's bad. Too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Sims 5 is multiplayer, which I know, I think there's a Sims 4 multiplayer mod. Right. Um, but to have that in the game and maybe be cross-platform would be really cool. Mm-hmm. I can already uh, picture the, the Sims 5 roleplay now. Right. <laughs> that would be very interesting to watch. And, it would be very interesting to watch. But yeah, no, uh, I think if it were to come out, it wouldn't be for another couple of years anyway. Yeah. Considering it's yeah, in, it's in like, like the rumors slash, you know, very pre-development stages. So. EA. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did see where EA is promising this year's Madden will work. Like, how it? bad does it have to be when they have to promise that a game will work? And did they refund for the broken version of Madden? <laughs> I just seen that when I was looking into stuff today, and I'm like, EA promises Madden will work. And I'm like, 
really? It's gotten to that point? Has it EA? Okay, whatever. Um, there are know. some good deals out there. Uh, Day Z is 40% off through uh, August 6th, as well as The Forest is 75% off uh, on Steam right now. That's a pretty uh, good unrailed. deal. Yeah, that's a really good deal. I, I may pick up The Forest because I've always wanted to get that game. Um, Unrailed is free right now through August 11th, and then backing that up, uh, starting next week, Cook, Serve, Delicious 3 will be free. Um, Epic has been on it here lately. They've had some really good free games here. Uh, I will recently. say Unrailed, I've played it pre previously. It's a very fun game, but it's kind of like, um, God, what's that game called? The cooking one. What's the cooking one? Uh, I can't remember what the uh, cooking yeah. one is. Overcooked? Where, overcooked, that's it. And uh, so it gets very heated when you're playing like with friends and stuff or with people where it gets like very tense. Well, it gets yeah. very tense, right? Because uh, like something like it, with Unrail, the train's continuously moving and you got to work on like clearing out a path and mm -hmm. placing down railroads so the train keeps on moving through. And uh, it gets very tense sometimes because, you know, you're like, Oh my God, get over there and do the work. I, I still remember playing and I was like getting so heated and stressed out and uh, it's, it's a very interesting game. So expect to yeah, lose friendships Nick. over it. <laughs> well, you, uh, you messaged me a few days ago. It's like, uh, hey, how about next weekend uh, we do like some drinking and playing games and stuff. I propose we drink and play this game. Oh that's my, my God. That's, that's, that's my proposal right there. <laughs> <laughs> that could be interesting. We could do it. We could do it. Teamwork gets it makes the dream work. We could do it. If we had another, I think it's up to four players. So maybe we could rope Bryant in there. We can rope somebody in. Yeah, we could rope someone in for sure. Uh... <laughs> there you go. I'm starting to pull them in. <laughs> oh yeah, I uh, I can't rem. I think I talked about it on the past podcast, but I did finish Yellowstone. And, right. uh, the whole roping in that kind of reminded me of that because I, you know, that's a thing cowboys do. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, um, that that plays a small part in this show, and yeah, that's what I, that's what my mind went to. But um, yeah, so that kind of wraps up the good deals in the gaming news section for today, or yep. for for this week's, or for 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 this uh, episode. Right. Um, as far as broadcast though, I know um, I have been severely lacking. Uh, and I hope to rectify that uh, starting next week. I am uh, going out of town this weekend, so uh, no streams for me this weekend. But uh, hopefully, you know, starting next week we get back to the grind. I kind of, I kind of have this vision of doing trucking in the afternoon and doing flying in the evening through the week, and then the weekend is just wild card. You know, whatever comes up. Yeah, you've been doing a lot of flying lately. Is what you've oh, been playing. God. Oh, yeah, I didn't put that as what I've been playing yeah. lately, and that's a flying simulator, because um, we're going to talk about that, too, here in a yeah, minute. Yeah, we've got um, something to cover here. And uh, Do you have anything to say, broadcasting-wise? Broadcasting? I mean, I've also been taking, like, you know, a step back and doing some other things. You know, it's nice weather, and, you know, I've been working a little bit, and... Uh, yeah, it's... I've been helping it... out uh, with some family stuff, so... But... I feel like it is a struggle to brought to be a streamer when weather's nice because oh. it's like <laughs> i want to stream but not every day it's really nice outside so i kind of want to go out and touch grass right so yeah 100 percent. um that's kind of where i'm at too and you know i got uh school coming up soon too so you, you know that's kind of right. it's almost like a, a small stress thing that i got going on it, it, it i always you know get like that you know school's coming up and whatnot so you know, I got to yeah. start thinking about that and, you know, it kind of takes over my mind sometimes. So it's kind of hard to get on stream when I'm kind of thinking about that all the time. So, right. But. And um, I've always said it's better to not stream than to stream when you don't want to like if right. you're really not into it don't stream yeah it's because... not that i don't want to stream right i, I, I right, want to jump on like, streaming but when i'm not ready to like right. be my best self then that's what i'm saying yeah like uh if, if you're not gonna put your best foot forward if you got a lot of stuff on your mind it's right. best to not stream because your viewers will pick up on it you know right but um, like overall like i've even been like not on social media as much anymore 
just mm-hmm. kind of like taking a break from it. And I, I do find myself now that I've taken a break, I'm more ready that when I do come back on the stream and, and check out all the stuff, I'm more, I got more energy for it for sure. Right, so. right. Yeah, I think it's good for uh, for content creators to take a break, you know, for for mental health reasons and you know to to breathe, you know. Well, it's, it's like if you're working a normal job. To... Exactly. Take a week vacation, yeah. you know. There, you get vacation time for a reason, right? Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, you know, definitely try and use it and take that break, mm-hmm. and, and really yep. use that break for yourself. <laughs> right. And and do what you need to do. That's not mm-hmm. work related. So. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so you're still watching Ozark there, hey? Oh my gosh, this factorial stuff has put a pause on a bunch of other things, That's right? Because, like, again, like I said, I've been, you know, stepping back and spending time outside too. So mm-hmm. the fact, this time I've spent on factorial is literally all my free time. <laughs> so, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. You're right? enjoying it, right? Yeah. So, uh, but no, Ozark, I do got to start up. You know, I got season three and four to pump out and uh, mm-hmm. going to be doing that. Uh, shortly probably you know as you know I think factorial I'm going to start doing on on stream a little bit there more often go. instead of off stream yeah yeah that'll be good and then it'll give me some more time when I finish my stream go to bed and put on like an episode or two of Ozark there you go so what are you watching <laughs> though <laughs> I have uh I have pressed the rewind button I've been watching a lot of older stuff um I could literally watch I Love Lucy from cover from the first episode of the first season to the last episode of the last season and go back and start the start it all over because right. Lucille Ball was a once in a century kind of person. She is just uh, this big ball of life and energy and and she was just such a comedy uh, natural. So. Um, I've been watching that, and no hate, but I have been watching All in the Family. Um, I can see how this show would not fly today, because uh, (laughs) Archie Bunker is very much a uh, prejudiced, uh, not really like a womanizer per se, but like, uh, you know, he thinks a woman's place is in the kitchen, and... You know, his uh, his wife, Edith, tends to his every need. And he's just a very ignorant, mm. you know, person. And uh, But he has a daughter, uh, Gloria, and her husband, um, Meathead. That's his nickname. Um, his real his <laughs> name on the show is Mike. But uh, Archie always calls him Meathead. Uh I didn't even realize this until I looked it up on IMDb. It's played by Rob Reiner. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a character that's, you know, in college and, you know, the very opposite of Archie. You know, Archie's a super conservative, you know, racist bigot and who thinks, you know, I'm not a bigot. You know, I got a lot of black friends, you know, stuff like that. He's that kind of person mm-hmm. versus... Michael or Meathead, who is this super liberal guy, you know, and he's in college. And so him and Archie are, are bumping heads all the time. And it just, it creates some of the best comedy. Like, uh, I can only imagine, like, I can see why this show was popular when it was aired. Like I said, I don't think they could get away with it today because I feel like, you know, it would be canceled in two seconds. <laughs> but I'm glad that. It hasn't been canceled in a way because you can see the out and out ignorance of this character. Um, yeah. And I feel like we can we can learn from that. We can learn from the ignorance of Archie Bunker and go. have a laugh at the same time. So hmm. don't cancel me just because I'm watching a show like that. <laughs> I've never heard of this show all in the family. So oh, it, 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 it's older than I am. I want to say it came out in like the early 70s. Oh wow! But it's it is so funny. It is so funny, and yeah, it is. I swear, everything on that show is brown, like uh, Archie's chair, which is almost a character in and of itself. It's brown. The clothes they wear are different types of creams and browns, and the, it's just brown. And like, I don't know. It is the the. You can tell it's set in the seventies. It just has that seventies yellow tinge to everything. Mm, yep, I know what you mean. Yeah, definitely seen that. Okay. So yeah, that's what I've been watching. Um, Interesting. 
I really want to get into the offer, which is about um, the guy that made, uh, that produced um, Godfather, but I just haven't started that yet. But that's kind of what's next for me that's, like, current. Right. But, um, once I once I you know finish up Ozark here at some point, okay. then you know we can dive into Stranger Things as well. Yeah, I'm looking forward so, to that. Like that's Seems something like a producer or writer or like some bigwig on the set of that series. When they were doing season one, they didn't think it would fly. They thought it was going to flop big time. <laughs> right. And here they are, you know, one of the biggest like. Uh, series oh, yeah. finales ever apparently. Every time they talk about a new season, I got everybody, you know, talking about it. So So and is this a, is it a series finale or was it just a finale for this season? I got no idea. I know nothing about the show. <laughs> I you just know that. it's a talk about that. show, right? And I I'm right, like, yeah. you know what? I'm I'm not on this this wagon that's just flying down the train tracks and you know, I, I feel like I got to jump on it while it's moving right now, so that has always been a problem for me in life. I very rarely am on the wagon as in <laughs> terms of like pop culture, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. the time of like music and series. I used to be really good with keeping up with the movies like 15 years ago, but not anymore. Mm -hmm. Right now, I feel like I do a good job keeping up with video games, even though I still play the same old ones over and over and over. I still know what's new and hip and poppy because all you got to do is open up your Twitch and whatever the flavor of the week is that's what literally everyone's playing <laughs> oh yeah but the, i even catch myself too going on like months at a time without even seeing what's popular on twitch <laughs> yeah true like true. i well I, I guess what i do see is you know in my fall list i do see the the you know games everybody's playing so i can see in a way what is popular but you know yeah. it, it is hard you know I, I i already got such a you know community that i find hard to keep up with that it's hard mm -hmm. for me to, you know, spend time and, and seeing what's going on in the world. <laughs> oh, I know. So, yeah. In, in ways, based on the last couple of years going on, sometimes I don't want to see what's going on in the world. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't watch the news anymore because nope. it's all bad and depressing. I have uh, never really watched, like, news, like news channels and stuff. Mm -hmm. Most of my news comes from whatever comes I come across on the internet, and I don't scout it out. <laughs> yeah. So... Um. It's My issue is you don't get the news anymore. You get someone's opinion of the news. Therefore, it's skewed. It's not like it was decades ago where they literally just told you the news and you you take you put your you know you you interpret it how you will. Nowadays, you can tell the same news story and it'll get spit back out at you three different ways. Oh so, yeah, eh, that's my yeah. Problem with the news. A lot of bias anymore. and a lot of you know stuff and I, I feel like news opinion on it. Yeah. news should not have any bias news should be hey I, this is what's going on and like yeah. you said you interpret it how it, it spit out at you I wish I wish I don't know how if the government could do this they probably couldn't because you know problems with the constitution and all that I wish they could come in and define the word news <laughs> and if you're using the word news you can't have it on your network that it's news if you have people giving the news and giving their opinion on it. You know, that shouldn't be the news. That should be Fox opinions and, and, and hold on, hold you know. On. You said you want, you want the government to come in and change? Just define the word news and say, okay, you're not really giving the news. You're just giving opinions on the news. Therefore, you're not a news channel. just want to say, looking at the past of, you know, certain government things i don't think uh it's a good idea for the government to have any say on the news so <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I know that's kind, of a, that's kind of a communist viewpoint i guess but it but. just pisses me off because um sometime we uh, i heard this thing one time how we are a slave to our freedom which basically means like uh you know when it comes to the news it's hard to get the news because there's so much fake news out there you know, and um, if yeah. you have truly have freedom, then you're kind of, you're so free, you don't know what you want to do in life. So I think that has hit uh, the two, like, latest generations the hardest. It's like, ah, oh, I got all this pressure. I graduate school. And then people are telling me I need to know what I'm, I'm supposed to be right when I graduate high school and go into college and know exactly what I want to be when I turn 18. And it's like, come on now. Yeah. 
no it definitely it, it took me a while and you know every time i like you know i wasn't always wanting to be an accountant and, and bookkeeper and stuff right. and, but that's what i'm going to school for now and I, I do have my thing too if i go through school and what if i don't like it <laughs> But, yeah. uh, you know, I, I feel more, uh, you know, I, I, I guess I'm more, I don't know, what's the word for it? Like, I, I've come to the conclusion that this is my thing that I want to do for sure. This is, right. This is what I'm more confident with, with my choice right now than I would have been, right. you know, three, four years ago. Four years ago, yeah. Like, okay. at one point a couple of years ago, you know, I was going to go through school to be a paramedic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'd do it. Like, would I still kind of enjoy doing that? I would enjoy doing it, but I don't know if I would be able to, you know, keep up and wanting to do that my entire life. Like, that is quite, you know, the job to do. So I think, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a young man's game. Like, I think you're you're good for that till maybe forty, forty five. But after that, it's kind of like, oh god, getting in and out of this rig all day long and lifting these papers, right. it's killing me. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but I do feel like that kind of skill trait sets you up to easily slide into something else. Yeah. But no, like it, like definitely interesting. And, you know, I, I could have gone with it, but I just, I came to think about it more that, you know, being an accountant is just more for me for a job. Mm -hmm. And I think, I feel like it'll be better for long term, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? We're just gonna we're gonna go with that, it yeah. this time around and see what uh, <laughs> see which way the world spins me off to. See how it goes. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, one thing I wanted to talk about was Twitch etiquette. <laughs> I feel like it, it it was a thing back in my day on Twitch. You know, I feel like that kind of me now. Um, whereas like, I feel when newer people come to Twitch, they don't really know like, yeah. the proper etiquette. Like, um, say, for example, a streamer, let's say, for example, you're you're watching a stream and one of your other favorite streamers comes into that stream. And, uh, you know, their name is Cutie Pie or whatever. And, you know, you're like, oh, Cutie Pie is here. I'm going to say hey and I'm going to ask when they're streaming. Now. Oh. I just always felt that was in poor taste. Not only like are you talking about another streamer in another and and this other streamer's chat room, but you're also putting your other favorite streamer in a bad position because I know when I watch other people, I want all the light to be on them. I right. am a, I'm just a viewer when I'm watching other streamers. So that's one thing I I personally do not like is when someone's like, "Hey, Bravo chick, when are you going to stream again?" I'm like, I, you know. Not right now, because right now I'm watching Nick and Nader 15, and I just want to watch him. You Personally, know? like, as streamers, we make these communities and in, in, in a lot of different platforms for you to connect with us on. We've got, you know, many streamers have a Discord. Many streamers have a Twitter, you know, a, an Instagram. Facebook, like, yeah. Et cetera, et cetera, right? We have all these platforms you can connect with us on and, and see all, you know, what we're talking about or, you know, communities. Reach yeah. out to us on those platforms, yeah. not on somebody else's platform, which is right. their Twitch page. That is yeah. their platform, right? So, right. I agree. Saying hey to another streamer is great. If you see yeah, somebody that's else, fine. that's what the chat's for. You know, you can chat with, uh, you know, people that are in the chat. But asking, you know, like you said, a streamer when they're streaming next, like, <laughs> Jesus, man. It's not, don't, don't, do, just don't do it. Ugh. <sighs> Uh, yeah. Don't, and this one goes without saying, don't promote yourself in other people's chat rooms or in their discords without permission. Yeah. Um, I can't stand it when people are like, let's go raid this person. And I feel like I have to be a little bitch, but it is what it is. And I'm like, look, my channel, my rules, I pick mm -hmm. who we're going to go see. Um, some yeah. people leave it up to their viewers and maybe that's something I'll do sometime. But um, I don't know. I've always... Maybe I'm old school, and this this could be a good thing to get your opinion on. I feel like raids are so invasive to the stream you're going to. Like, yeah, it's meant to be a good thing in a good light, but... And I'm sure, like, I appreciate the people that raid me, but I don't... I've always been uneasy to raid other channels because I just feel like it's invasive. 
what if I don't know what they're doing right now in, in, in you know, their stream right now. What if they're in a really important plot in this uh, big story game and then I raid and cause a ruckus in their chat room, you know, or something like that. That's why I usually I like to host more than raid, but I have been getting better. But what's your opinion? On My that? opinion is like, you know, if you have it, I, I'm pretty sure you can disable people raiding your channel. I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. that's a thing. So okay. if you don't want to be raided, you can choose not mm -hmm. to be, you know, not have people raid you. That is a thing. Okay. All right. I could be wrong, but that. I'm pretty sure I saw that setting in there. And two, it's up to the person if they have an alert that pops up on the screen and say that they're being raided. That's true. And it's yeah, up to them to well. respond to it in the chat. That's all up to the streamer. So if they're streaming on the true. platform and they have all this stuff set up, then that's all on them. Right. Okay. That's a good way to look at it. Then. But yeah, rating... <laughs> Yeah, like uh, spreading the love. Yes, that's a good way to put it is uh, spreading the love. You know, right. you're kind of sending off a community to, you know, your community to somebody that maybe you like to watch. Mm -hmm. That's how I, I usually like to raid people that I'm following already, you know, mm -hmm. that are already yeah, in my community. Same. And, same. you know, kind of send them off to people I'm watching. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, somebody that was watching me there has is not following them and they come across right. and you like them. Absolutely. Like I, I don't urge somebody to follow. I don't say, "Oh, go follow the streamer." I yeah. say, "Come, come with me on the raid and go check out the streamer." If you like them, hit the follow button. Right. right. That's what it's there for. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. But that's kind of my take on that. But. So moving on from that, and I'm sure we'll Twitch etiquette. That may be like a rolling thing, you know, as we go on. But um. Okay, I got something to expand on this that I kind of wanted to talk about. Okay. And it uh, it's not really ju it's not just related to Twitch, right? Okay. It's related to social media in general. And I know mm -hmm. all of you know about this and it's to do with OnlyFans content. Mm -hmm. I know I've made jokes about it, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it, put it on OnlyFans. But holy shit, I feel like recently everyone, everyone has an OnlyFans joke, right? Like everybody. Yeah. But man, that on that platform. It is so, like, when I scroll through social media, TikTok, Instagram, you know, all these platforms, Twitter, mm -hmm. I can't go five minutes scrolling through these platforms without seeing an advertisement for somebody's OnlyFans. I'm like, holy crap. Like, <laughs> it is terrible. When I it go is. through TikTok, it's terrible, you know. Every other post is a, like a, a like a girl like not even doing anything crazy in the video, just standing there mm -hmm. and like you know half naked and <laughs> and then saying then check out my link in the Instagram link or yeah. whatever, like, right? Wink, you know, yeah, get your wallet yeah. out, big boy. Yeah, and then you know you got a lot of live channels on like people TikTok Live. It's same thing. They just sit there and it's like oh my god, like. Are they nude on TikTok? Is that no allowed? No, no nudity is okay. allowed, right? But they stand there with like you know a lot of exposure and everything but the little brown spot. You yeah, know, <laughs> but the teeth. Yeah. <laughs> so, but no, I don't. I don't know how everybody else is is uh, experiencing I, this, no, but I don't know, and and I don't understand how people are making the money that they are making doing this considering that you know 30 years ago if you wanted porn if you were a little boy or whatever you had to hope and pray you'd get your hands on one of your dad's nudie magazines whereas today it is literally literally everywhere we're talking about now it's you know seeped into tiktok instagram twitter and even i would say twitch you, you don't know, even in, have in some, to like you don't have to dig for it it's, it's on free google it's literally <laughs> yeah it's literally everywhere and the fact that you know, you can go see everything and anything and stuff you don't even want to see in that side of the world, you know, in the porno universe versus throwing money like crazy at this boob streamer on Twitch or this, you know, girl on TikTok. I'm like, they're just a cock tease and you're giving them money to be a cock tease. So I don't, I've never understood the obsession with those type of streamers. I'm not going to like creators. judge people for stuff in that regard. Whatever. People want to throw their money wherever. I don't Turn care. That on. That's their money. I they could they I, could yeah, put, you I know what that. I mean, I right? Just, I don't understand it, right? Yeah, go yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah. Waste your but I'm like 
you could see it all for free. You know, I don't, I just, I've there's, never understood those kind of people. There's certain aspects where, like, I, I can understand in, in some degree, but um, I, I've always understood, like, you know, there's sex workers. There's always been sex workers, right? Yeah, that's, you know. And the, they've been the out there. job or whatever. But, man, you would have to go pretty much and uh, find this stuff, right? But right. now I just feel like it's just being blasted into my face, and I can't get away mm -hmm. from it. Yeah, I, I, like, um... <laughs> <sighs> you know, there's there's strip clubs, and they may have a billboard that just says "Gentlemen's Club," which is the biggest laugh in in the freaking world. Yeah. Oh God, I guess I'm I'm judging too many people, but um, <laughs> I don't mean to. If you like strip clubs, that's awesome. I right. ain't never set foot in one, nor do I ever plan to. Um, freaking to like, yeah, you can't scroll through your favorite you know social platform without it without being seeing boom it. in your face yeah, yeah it's it's so, wild yeah, that is frustrating you <laughs> kind of wish like you could be like okay algorithm you know i don't like this therefore don't show me this again you know type deal yeah and i almost feel like you know because i've selected that i'm a male it's gonna give me all this female right. stuff in my face right and so i don't know if like you know as a female going through these platforms if they're experiencing the same thing i have no idea I don't know if on TikTok you experience it a lot less than I would. I have like I know the algorithm is supposed to like give you content that you're that you like. But man, like I, I'm trying to look for funny stuff on TikTok because I want to laugh. And, and now you know a certain something's you know they're trying to get something hard. You know that's what that's all I'm gonna say, right? So. <laughs> And I'm like, no, that's not what I'm looking for right now. If I want to look for that, I will search, like, I, I, you know, specifically search for something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's websites for it, you know. And I agree, it is frustrating. It is, and I don't. But, I got it one time on Twitter when someone I followed literally posted a video talking about they just opened an OnlyFans account, and I was like, Pearl Clutch didn't even know you could show this kind of stuff on Twitter because it. Oh yeah, you can show it all on Twitter. Twitter. There were no secrets. <laughs> there were no secrets. I seen it full Monty, baby. And it was like, oh, yeah. oh my. You know, and I'm not a prude or anything, but I'm like, I don't really go to Twitter for this. I'm going to unfollow you. No, you know, I'm not, you know, to each their own, but I just don't want to see that on my Twitter feed. I want to see gaming and baseball. <laughs> yeah. That's bang off. That's all I want to see on my Twitter. Yeah, but uh, I, I find like Twitter, unless they're like you you're using the search function or looking through hashtags or whatever it may be. That's when you'll find, like, you know, whatever you're looking for. Like, when I scroll through my feed, I only see stuff from people I'm following or that they, yeah. you know, retweet, basically. Mm -hmm. So, thank God my Twitter is pretty clean on, on that regard. Yeah, so, I feel like, you know, good. I'm safe scrolling through Twitter in public. <laughs> but yeah, TikTok, right? I'm starting to question that now, right? Um, you know, somebody's going to look at me scrolling through TikTok and every other video is going to be a girl that's half naked. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, that is... Uh... That is an interesting, you know, formulation there for why they're looping you in on that. But yeah. um, why don't we talk about our controllers for a little bit? Because I just picked up the Turtle Beach Velocity 1 flight controls and I freaking love it. It's mounted like right here. It's so yeah, awesome. I, it. I love it so much. So, I've owned this previously, so if you're watching our video, I'm kind of showcasing it right now. But the yoke is pretty awesome. Um like uh, it has a throttle quadrant with it and mm -hmm. and the full yoke control with a lot of buttons and things on it mm -hmm. makes but, flying uh, a lot of fun but yeah like uh everything is is pretty much there for you to be able to fly a plane the only thing that it doesn't so come with fun. is is rudder pedals but it comes with triggers on the back of the yoke mm -hmm. which makes it it's very like easy a, yeah like a controller yeah basically. yeah it comes with like the triggers that would be on a controller on the back of it so uh, it does make up for it in that regard there. So you don't really need rudder pedals. Um, mm -hmm. But, like, it, it makes flying so much more fun. <laughs> it does. Like, uh, I've always said if you've played the trucking sims for 100 hours and you're still having fun, get a wheel. Mm -hmm. I say the same thing about flying. If you've played Flight Simulator for a good amount of time and you're still enjoying it, invest in it. Even if you play it, Flight it, Simulator, like, once a week or something. It, right I th uh, and you can afford getting a, a yoke and, and stuff yeah like it is an investment i think i gave 349 for it but right. i'm gonna get my money's worth out of it because i play flight simulator a lot so if you do 
find yourself playing a lot of flight simulator, invest in it, you know? Right. Because you're only going to, like, it's only going to increase your enjoyment of the game. Like, hand over fist. So good. That's why I've been flying a lot is because this thing is freaking awesome. Um, you have the G27 wheel. Yep, it's G27. And, yeah, that was my first wheel. I had the G27. Um, I recently picked up the G29 about nine months, ten months ago. Or, God, it might even be a year now. Time is a weird thing. Oh, it's such a weird thing. <laughs> it is. And they're great, too. Like, um, ugh, dirty. But here is uh, the G29. Yeah, the PlayStation version. Um I love it. It's my baby. Um, really fun. It just takes racing and any kind of driving games to the next level. So I know, yeah. like, for race and, racing wheels, there's another popular one, which is uh, Thrustmaster wheels. Yeah. And they're supposed to be really good as well. Uh, a little bit more money for, um, like, their mid-range what wheel. Is. Right. But I think it's also worth it, too, for the extra money. You get a belt-driven wheel, which is quieter. And uh, you, I think it does better with feeling for force feedback. Yeah, I like when I picked up the G twenty nine. Um, the thrust master came out maybe six months after the fact. I'm like, man, mm. if I'd have known that, I would have waited. Because the, my G twenty seven still worked. The only problem was a few of the buttons were uh, were going out on the wheel and um, my clutch. It uh it didn't register from time to time. Mm. That's literally the only reason why I moved to the G twenty nine. But uh, nothing wrong with the Logic they, wheels. They're great wheels for the money. They, they really are, are phenomenal wheels. Yeah, yeah, they're really good. They're a really good starter wheel, I guess you could say. And then you can spend thousands on wheels. Like if you're mm. hardcore, you know, into racing, like Fanatec wheels are incredibly yeah thousands of dollars you can spend on that stuff. Really, really nice. But those yeah. are uh, those are direct drive wheels, and those will give you the most realistic force feedback, and they mm. have a lot more power to them. Um, and uh, other than that, I've never actually felt one, so I yeah, don't I've never personally used know the difference. I ever will unless I'm at a, like an expo. I've or definitely something like watched that. YouTube videos, and they swear by their wheels. So oh yeah, um, that is an investment. I feel like if I was to ever get hard into like i racing, you know, then maybe I'd consider something like that. But I don't feel like I really need that for for Forza and trucking. The one thing I would love to see added into um like simulators and stuff mm -hmm. is uh force feedback in the gear shifter. I that as a nice. person that drives a manual transmission mm -hmm. feeling the shifter, like the force feedback in the shifter when you put it in the gear and stuff and you feel like, God, I would love to have that. Yeah. Or like, you know, if you accidentally grind a gear or something, it doesn't you know, let you put it in gear if you're grinding. That would be so freaking awesome. That and would be really cool. Maybe that's where, where they're going to go to next because I feel like they've got the wheel down pretty good. Yeah. The wheel is down pretty good. And same with the clutch pedal. I would love to see yeah. like a... You know, them work with the clutch pedal because, you know, I, I don't know how many people have driven a manual transmission. But in, you know, a manual, I, I when you push like, the clutch pedal, you got resistance yeah. and then it loosens up. I would like more realistic pedals because pe don't pedals like in a vehicle, they kind of hang from the bottom and you push like Most that. vehicles, yeah. Most Whereas vehicles, like yeah. now, like the pedals, they're more like this. So I would love to see... Which I, th I know people have turned their pedals into like more of a realistic fashion, but I would love to see a set of pedals like Thrustmaster that. Has a, some, Thrustmaster has yeah. a set of pedals like that where you can say, actually the, reverse yeah. them. But so that's pretty wild. And then uh, I, I love like a typical PlayStation Xbox controller. I, I play Farming Simulator with an Xbox controller. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, your keyboard and your mouse. Corsair K95, best keyboard for the book. And uh, I really enjoy my Corsair mouse too. Ducky, <laughs> Ducky keyboard. Ducky, Come on now. Ducky, Ducky, get out of here! Doesn't uh, even uh, have a numpad. Jesus. <laughs> there's Ducky keyboards that do okay. Just because I decided to get a 65% keyboard doesn't mean the keyboard shit. Mm, it's just 35% uh, shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I... uh, so what's your? Yeah. yeah. No. Not even Go ahead. It. Not worth it. What? No, no, no. no. Come on. Come on. You know Keanu you Reeves want to. right now. One plus one does, does not equal three. 
but I'm not going to argue it. <laughs> I can't read. Uh, so what is your quote for this episode? My quote? Okay. So this one, um, I don't have a person that came from because I've heard this quote like multiple times from multiple mm-hmm. different sources. So yeah. um, I kind of just took it out of memory. Um, and it goes, you know, you're on the right path when things stop being easy. And this can ring pretty true. I mean, when you're going down the right path, things tend not to be easy. Yeah. But what you're doing is you're going through this hard time to make it easier on yourself later on in a way. Absolutely. So whether it be um, going through school to get a good job, you know, a good career right. later on, it's hard to do that at first. Um, maybe if some, you know, careers are even hard forever, but, yeah. you know. Like you, some, you never stop learning and getting certified, right. you know. Uh, I know, uh, like, exercise, you know. It's yeah. good to exercise, but it's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy, and it's, some people see think it's fun. I find fun in exercise, like riding a bicycle, playing golf, but just, like, going in and running on a treadmill or something like that. Unless uh, we were talking um, a few days ago how it would be nice to have a treadmill and be able to, like, turn on Netflix while you're doing that. Like, I would love that. Yeah. You know, so I could get down to something like that because I would be done watch the show and not even realize, oh, I done walk like two miles. Yeah. Crazy, no, you know? it's uh, definitely crazy. And it's, it's hard to do that if you're outside running. You know, you can't. It's it's not exactly ideal to. Weather, too. Like. Yeah. I would love, like, I enjoy going out and riding my bicycle. It's just too, it's literally too hot down here right now for that and too humid. You know, you need to have to go late at night, which I refuse to do because people fly up and down my road like a bat out of hell, even though the speed limit's like, I don't know, 20, 15, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I won't ride like at dusk. And so I'd have to get up early in the morning and I'm just not a morning person, you know? <laughs> yeah, neither am I. Neither am I. Even though, like, when I do wake up in the morning, I'm like, man, this is very <laughs> beautiful morning. Like, it is It is one of those things, like, I, I've always enjoyed, if I am up in the morning, I do like to, you know, see what it's like outside. And it's, it's like a very calming feeling. It's very hard to explain. But... My first thought when I wake up is like, ooh, time for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just, like, like I said, like, that's very rare that I'd have that where I wake up early in the morning. It's very rare. Very rare. Yeah. Because I am a night owl, but I don't know. Maybe it's just like the difference where I don't get experience very often. It's more of a special okay. thing. I don't know. The time, the I will say the times when I do really look forward to waking up is like uh, you're waking up early to go on vacation. You know, mm. I always love travel days, uh, except the one where you got to go home because it's like God. I wish I could just be home already. You know, but going from home to Wherever you're vacationing at, I always look forward to that day because right. it's like, oh, we're getting up, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to be on the road, you know, maybe you're going to take a flight. Or whatever. Now, I know I some people, really like, if they, like the night before, going to do something exciting the next day, some people are able to sleep just fine. They, they don't have any difference. Some people tend not to be able to sleep the night before. What kind of person are you? I tend to be the one that can't sleep because I'm too excited. Same. Um, me and some friends were going camping one time in the mountains, and they went to bed around one just because we were all excited. And they were like, okay, well, look, we got to go make ourselves go to sleep. So I went and laid down, and I don't like to just lay there. If I lay there for 20 minutes and I'm not asleep, I will get back up. Oh, yeah. I cannot stand to lay there and just... For the sake of laying there, I will get back up. I've I've gone so, to sleep. I've I've gone well, like to my bed to lie down and try to go to sleep. And mm-hmm. after like fifteen minutes, I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not going to sleep. I get up. I op- I open up a game. Yeah. Right now it would be factorial. I'd be like, all right, back to the factory. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I. W- my brother was still up, and uh, I ended up staying up to like five o'clock in the morning. Which is when we were going to leave. And uh, my brother's like, oh, can I go wake up Courtney and uh, Logan? I'm like, yeah, go for it. He goes and wakes them up. And he's like, he comes back and he's full of crap. And he's like, oh, they were doing it. And I'm like, they were not. They were sleeping. <laughs> he's like, oh, they were getting it on. I'm like, 
my cousin, you know, wouldn't do that to me. She wouldn't do that in my own bed, you know? So. Yeah. But uh, my quote for this episode is, uh, words are, in my not-so-humble opinion, the most exhaustible source of magic, capable of both inflicting injury and remedying it. Uh, said by one of my favorite, uh, like, uh, people I like to quote all the time is Albus Percival Wolfric Byrne Dumbledore. So, um, I've always loved that. Like, yeah, the pen is mightier than the sword. You should always think before you speak. And, um, right. you can cut someone down or lift them up with one sentence, you know, depending on what you're going to do that day. Exactly. Yeah. Words are very powerful. And, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, in some ways they can be more powerful to, uh, you know, someone's, like, how they think and go about their day than even doing something. 100%, yeah. Yeah. 100%. And, like, you know, there's there's all, all there's been all this talk about, like, physical abuse, right? Mm-hmm. But I find emotional abuse is not really talked about as much. And I feel like it can yeah. affect people more. Some people and like mental, yeah, mental health is getting a you know, is finally getting its platform, and that's a good thing. But I agree, like, emotional um, health is really important as well. And you know, I always say, you know, seek out the people that lift you up, that you know, not the ones that bring you down. So, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and uh, you know, a smile is free, and happiness is a choice. (laughs) Yeah, I just I just choose to be happy no matter how shitty things are at the time. Yeah. But um, definitely hard though. It, it's it as humans, be. like it's it's easy for us to be, you know, mad or upset or whatever. Like it's easy. That's what our our, our minds will f- go to instantly. But you get mad, going back you get to strong, back to my your hands and you stand. Back <laughs> to my quote, you know, you know you're on the right path when things stop being easy. So. That's right. Life isn't hard. Life, uh, life isn't easy. You know, yeah. it's very, very hard. Emotions are hard um, to control. <laughs> yeah. So to lighten the mood a little bit, let's go to uh, one of our newest segments: a lie and a truth. Um, shall I lead off this one? Yeah. All right. Let's see. The first one is, um, my natural hair color is a brunette, and uh, my other is I was born right-handed. <laughs> you were born right-handed. Yeah. I'm left-handed now. Oh, thanks for answering that for me. You're left-handed now, so you were born right-handed. Is that what you just confirmed for me? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I should have just said I'm left-handed. Yeah. yeah, I shouldn't have said anything at all. I, guess. I told you, I was like, I think this is going to be a fairly easy one. Oh, well. So, yeah. Naturally blonde, even though I highlighted a little bit. <laughs> yeah. But I was born handed, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I switched so, when I was about five. Five. So maybe you switched. I was in the hospital. Um, well, I was in the hospital for the longest time. And I've always liked to doodle. I can't draw to save my life, but I'm, I've always liked to doodle, you know? Right. And uh, I was in the hospital, and they put the IV in the right hand, and I wasn't able to do anything. And... Mom said I just picked up with a picked up a pencil with my left hand and I never looked back. Interesting. So, mm-hmm. hmm. I and I feel like I could easily be ambidextrous because I can write pretty decently with my right hand as well. So I can't write that's a thing. with my left hand, but I'm able to do like use my left hand for a mm-hmm. lot of things, right? Like I've thrown a ball with my left hand. You know, yeah. I've I've like I, I've never really been tied to just my right hand except for writing. So interesting, but if I try to write with my left hand, yeah, <laughs> it ain't working. <laughs> yeah, I, I can barely even write with my right hand. All right, so <laughs> like it's not yeah, very had... neat. I mean, I've seen people that write a lot worse than I have. So yeah, I, I'm. I can either have chicken scratch or really nice handwriting. It depends how mm-hmm. fast I'm gonna go. Like depending how fast the thoughts are coming out is usually depends on uh, how nice my uh, handwriting is gonna be. So. What is your truth and what is your lie? All right. So one is I've owned four different steering wheels. And another is I've owned two different yokes. 
Hmm. Depending on how I've talked about all of this. I've talked about what I've owned and everything. It just depends on how much you remember, basically. Four different wheels. I feel like to an order of done that, you would need like a G29 by now or something like I've, along those lines. I, I mean, I've, I've had a wheel since I was 12 or 13, so. Oh, and you're so old now. That must be the true one then, yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Is that um, what you... <laughs> If you want to go with the same um, thing I, I went with, you know, giving out the answers, you know, it's going to be one crazy line of truth. That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Uh. Um, you might have had a yoke. Um, I can't, I want to say you were just playing with a joystick, though. I, fine, I don't, I, this is a hard one. I'm going to go with you've had four wheels. <laughs> no, I've had three wheels. Ah! Oh. Yeah. So you've had two yokes then. Yeah. So I did have the honeycomb yoke before. Really? I, yeah. You had the honeycomb and you I, switched to the Turtle Beach. I didn't switch. I uh, I ended up selling a while oh. ago. I, I I was into flight sim and then I wasn't in the flight sim, so I sold mm -hmm. it off. Gotcha. I sold the yoke for the pretty much the same I paid for it. Wasn't much yeah. less. Yeah. Maybe I lost the taxes on it or whatever because they were so. Mm -hmm. Like in demand, they, right? Yeah, they were especially like around COVID times when all the toys were went missing. All you know, all the stuff you could do on your own. That was one of the things was because I remember like shortly after, um, Brian or Talicon's the one that introduced me to flight sim, and I'm like, oh, I might get a yoke. And I remember looking at the honeycomb, and it was super expensive and out of stock. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, now you can get it for you know fairly good price, and mm -hmm. I think even the combo is maybe like a hundred dollars more than. The Turtle Beach one for what I think the the throttle thing is better. Yeah, um, I've so. heard the throttle quadrant for the Honeycomb is really nice. Yeah, I think looking at it, I've never experienced the throttle quadrant on the Honeycomb, but there is more on there. You know, it's got an yeah. autopilot thing on there, and it's got tension knobs yeah. for the throttle. So yeah, but no, I, I had the, the I had the yoke. I didn't yeah. have the throttle quadrant for Honeycomb. So. Okay, okay, that's interesting. So many. You've had three wheels. What, had, your, what were your other two? So I've had the first wheel I had was a Logitech Driving Force GT, and mm -hmm. it had a sequential shifter on the side, and it was quite a noisy wheel. Mm -hmm. So that was my first wheel, and I had it for God, a year or two. Mm -hmm. And then, um, okay. When I say different steering wheels, I mean like different like types of steering wheels. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess thinking about it, like I've had four different wheels. <laughs> yeah, now thinking back on, I've had like four different wheels, but I've had three different kind of wheels. It's kind of what I was okay. going with. Um, so then I had a G27 for a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Then uh, I think that one stopped working. And then I got a Thrustmaster wheel. Mm hmm. And then I went back on the G27 because I ended up okay. selling off the Thrustmaster stuff. I wasn't playing, I wasn't using the wheel stuff very much. So mm -hmm. I just sold yeah. everything off. And then that's when I got in the flight sim. So I mm -hmm. sold everything, went in the flight sim, got the yoke. And then I got out of flight sim, sold the yoke, and then bought a G27. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I used G27 because it was, you know, cheap. So, so. are you going to be keeping your controllers now? Um... For right now, yeah. For right now, yeah. For right now, them. yeah. They're staying. I'm keeping they're them, staying. yeah. But uh, you, you better. But yeah, so I've um, had a G27, Driving Force GT, and T300 RS from Thrustmaster. Well, there you go. Yeah, I've only ever had a Logitech wheel. I would really like to get a Thrustmaster though. Oh, the Thrustmaster, hands down, was better feeling. Yeah. Than the the G27 at least. So yeah, their their new one looks really really nice. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So uh, that is your lie and a truth. I was born right-handed, and Nick had uh, has two yokes. So there you go. Um, go ahead and start sending in your emails because uh, starting next episode, August the 11th, we're going to be doing a uh, segment that is from the Burt Show. So I'm stealing it. Sorry, Burt Show, love you, but it's too awesome not to do here. <laughs> it's going to be a uh, section called "Plead the Fifth. and that basically means that uh, you send us your questions. They could literally be about anything in the world, um, and we have to answer it. If we plead the fifth, 
then we you only get one plead the fifth. So right. say we're answering five questions on that certain podcast on that certain episode, and I plead the fifth on the first answer, then I have to answer the next four questions. No right. fans or buts about it. So and and try to Send think of questions, questions that work for both yeah. of us. You know what yeah, I mean? So yeah, like, like a, yeah. interchangeable. Yeah. And like I said, it could be about anything and everything. Just uh, send them in, gbbspodcast at gmail.com. And we have a few uh, a few emails to go over here. All right, email uh, lady. One. All right, the first one is from Spider. Uh, X Spider's Venom X. Uh, he streams as well on Twitch, twitch.tv slash X Spider's. That isn't working. It's, it's Spider's Venom. Just type that in there and you'll find it. Anyway. Uh, he says, to Nick and Wendy, what inspired you to become the content creators you are today? YouTube, Twitch, TikTok, and Facebook. That's a great question. Wherever you post your content, what or who inspired you to take this first step? What or who first... inspired? Mm -hmm. All right. Since you read out the question, I'll go ahead and, and uh, talk it first. Okay. I first started streaming. Uh, actually, at first I started with YouTube videos. And... Like, I was quite young. Like, I must have been, God, 12. Mm -hmm. And I would post uh, Minecraft videos. And I guess, yeah. who did I watch at the time? Like, I can barely even remember that far back, like, who I would watch. Like, God, I, I used to watch many Minecraft YouTubers. Mm -hmm. um, like, I remember watching... Were you watching, like, a Minecraft... Um... No. No. YouTubers or no, I'm not, I I used to be into watching the Yogs cast. Okay. So like Lewis and Simon, I think were the names. Um, mm -hmm. They they did a lot of Minecraft, like a lot of Minecraft, and they did a lot of modded Minecraft. So I remember them, but I'm pretty sure there was people even before that that I would watch, and I can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like so I you know do YouTube videos, and then. I uh, found Twitch through, uh, I, I must have talked about this on a previous podcast where like I, I came across um, Twitch through somebody's YouTube channel and mm -hmm. his name was Gold Glove. Yep. And I used to watch uh, him on Twitch all the time. And then I, I came across and found other streamers um, and I just was like, all right, I'm going to try out streaming. Mm -hmm. I was 13 years old. No, 14 oh. years old. Yeah, I was 14 yeah, when yeah. I started streaming. Thir you're yeah. 13 to be on the platform, all right? I was of age, you know, can't, you were, you can't were, be booted you were legal. off. You can't were be legal. booted off, all right? So yeah. um, I was 14 at the time when I started streaming. And uh, I played DayZ was one of the first games I played. Okay. And Silent Sentry was another DayZ stream, streamer I used to watch. And he was funny. Yep. And all that stuff, and he kind of inspired me to also stream, and all the other streamers too. It gave me inspiration that I used to watch Gold Glove and his group. They were called the Dapper mm -hmm. Crew at the time. It's not around anymore, yeah. but it's what they called right. themselves. And um, yeah, just kind of continued on streaming from there. And most of the time, like watching a lot of other streamers now, just whoever I watch on my follow list is all inspiration to me. Right? So. I agree. Yeah. Same. Um. For me, I was moderating. Um, I was a moderator for a pretty big uh, Minecraft streamer back in the day, um, and a fellow moderator of this person. I'm not gonna say any names, but a fellow moderator came up to me and was like, um, "You ever thought about streaming?" And I answered real quick, "Heck no, <laughs> I could never in a million years do that." Because fun fact, I may be this funny, outgoing person as Bravo Chick, but Wendy is very uh, what is it? Uh, uh introverted. Uh, not in introverted. Not, yeah. yeah, very introverted, very quiet person. And so I was like, I couldn't. And I used to hate like public speaking or yeah. or getting in front of cameras or anything like that. I'm like, oh hell, hell, hell no, you know. But I thought about it, like, and I thought that would just be it. No, I can't do that. But it kept sticking to me in my mind. For like three days, I couldn't get anything else off my mind but that. So I went back to that uh, fellow moderator who was, a, you know, a friend of mine. 
And I told him, I was like, yeah, let's let's do it. And he was like, yeah, he's like, I want to stream too, but I really want to have someone to stream with. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Let's go for it. Mm -hmm. So um, that's how I got my great start into streaming. And then, you know, I talked to that streamer and uh, got his advice. And he was always like, you know, consistency is the key. And, um, you know, treat it. That's where that thing comes from that I say from time to time. Treat is treat treat your stream as if you have forty thousand people watching you, and treat however many people you got watching you like there's only four people in the room. So yeah, I, time. I guess to continue on, like to to go on from inspiration after I started streaming, what like pretty much kept going, like pushing me to keep coming back was the people that came by my stream. You know, yeah. I always wanted to come back and I always wanted to say hi to them again. And yeah. that's always what has, you know, kept me going is just, you know, knowing that any any of those people that have come by my stream can come by again and say hi. Or whatever, yeah. have a chat. Like, you know, Absolutely. it's just, you know, the the viewers and, and, and everybody that comes by and, you know, wants to watch me for who I am. <laughs> that inspires me to keep going. Absolutely. Um, I agree. That's a good so. way to put it. Yeah. Uh, we have another question here from Abraham, twitch.tv slash Abraham1598. He's an OG, known Abraham a long, long time. He says, hello, my name is Abraham, better known as Abraham1598. Uh, my question to you guys is, uh, what made you want to start a podcast? And another question. So let's answer that one first, because it's a two-parter. Okay. I guess we've it's never talked on the podcast about what started this i don't think we've ever talked about it on the podcast it have we? literally started as a joke because <laughs> nick was streaming and he was like i've got and he just starts naming off all this stuff he has to do and i was in the process of telling him what i was reading and he was like man i want to read i just don't have time and i literally i made a joke <laughs> it's all it was meant to be i was like yeah so we should start a podcast because it's you know it's not like you've got enough stuff to do we should start a podcast too. And ha ha he he is a joke. And then the next day I get a message from Nick. So when, when, when are we doing this podcast? And I'm like, okay, let's go. <laughs> That's my take on it. What's your take on it, Nick? Yeah. Like, yeah, that stream that night, that was interesting. I, uh, I don't know. I was like going to call it quits on the stream, but I ended up just doing like just chatting and I was just hanging out with, you know, you guys in chat. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a few of us just hanging out or whatever and talking and then, we just kept going and going, you know, talking about a bunch of stuff. I brought out my whole <laughs> book collection and was talking about that and whatnot. And I, I even said, I, you know, I've always wanted to do like a, like a chatting portion or like mm -hmm. just like a conversation kind of thing, like on stream right. or with somebody, whatever it may be. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've always had like a want to do a podcast, but I've never really thought how I would structure the podcast, what it would be about, who it would be with, because I can't run a podcast by myself. All right. right. I, I would not be able to do it. Um, and I do think that the ideal solution for a podcast is to have two or three people, up to even four. Absolutely. I think yeah. after four, it might get a little quite crazy. A little muddy, yeah. Yeah. But uh, so I've always had that want to do a podcast. And then when Bravo was coming in and <laughs> made that joke, I said, joke <laughs> that's reality all right <sighs> mm -hmm. so yeah no i yeah. was like you know the next day i slept on it and and woke up and i was like let's do it all right you know if it, why wait around on something that what can it be or or right know, whatever like it's just do it you know i just freaking I didn't do sleep it. on it I didn't give it another thought because I'm, I was just joking, you know, <laughs> that's what I do, you know, I'm like, hey, 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 so, um, but that being said, I feel like we complement each other well because I feel like I'm a decent, pretty good writer, so I tend to handle, like, the script side and finding out stuff to talk about, whereas Nick is, is an awesome producer and, you know, he does the video and puts it to all the podcast platforms and whatnot, and, and he's a pretty good guy, and I guess I'm all right, too, so... <laughs> I feel like Please. we complement each other well. <laughs> yeah, no, and it works out, right? So, and uh, I don't know. I'm just, it gives me another thing to do, and that's different, right? Than just coming on right. and playing video games all the time. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a nice break from video games, but also coming on and and coming here with the community and all that. And yeah, I I always look forward to the podcast day. Yeah. Um, 
I usually end up worrying about it because I'm like, I don't think we got enough content. Yeah. I didn't say that this time. And I, <laughs> I think we're fine. Um, I, I've told you, I said, stop saying that because every single time we started, yeah. we've always, you know, we have enough. We always yeah, talk we about have, right. a lot of things. So, um, yeah. The second part to uh, Abe's question is um, what made you guys come up with the title for your podcast? I think that was in the joke, too. Was that like, was well, in the joke. You got, you, yeah, it was like, well, it's not like you don't have enough to do. Let's do a podcast and call it Games, Books, and Bullshit. <laughs> and... <laughs> we went with just it... that, right? Because yeah, I remember, I remember like... the next day I said, so the podcast title, are we going with Games, Books, and Bullshit? And you're like, yeah. <laughs> sure, why not? Because right? I'm like, well, I don't know what else to call it. Um, but as of this episode, we're now Games Broadcast and Bullshit. Yeah. So, uh we have there made that, that change, so there is, you know, yep. things changing, and uh, yep. who knows? We're evolving. Who knows what may evolve from here on out, right? So, because mm -hmm. podcasts yeah. tend to go for many, many, many episodes uh, if you commit to oh, it, yeah. and I'm here mm -hmm. to commit to it, right? Yeah, you know, this is what I'm, I want to come and do, and I'm committed. <laughs> I should probably be committed, but I am committed. Yeah. Uh, Abe also sent in the question: How do you like your pizza, uh, and do you like pineapple on your pizza? Yes, I'm. Uh, I'm all for a Hawaiian pizza. Pineapple mm -hmm. is is great. Yeah. Pineapple ham and onions is as ideal with the cheese. So there you go. There you go. Um, I don't have a problem with pineapple on pizza. I don't like it no more than once or twice a year though. So I'm not ordering it like every time I get pizza. Uh, mm -hmm. How do I like my pizza? Um. I usually get like a supreme or meat lovers, so yeah. Yeah, no, Pretty for sure. A, like uh, uh, meat lovers is probably my favorite. Mm -hmm. You know, I would say it, but you know, that's I'm gonna say that's what she said. But you know, I do like like a good. <laughs> like, I do love my meat. <laughs> what I mean. Oh, I do too, honey. Mm. Um, um, but yeah, that's not to be taken the wrong way. That is on pizza, so yeah. <laughs> So uh, that that concludes pretty much this episode of Games Broadcasts and Bullshit. Um, I am Wendy, uh, twitch.tv slash bravochick uh, on the Twitch, and uh, at bravochick10 on Twitter and on Instagram. Yeah, and I'm nickinator15 on the interwebs, or the real nickinator on Instagram. So uh, if you're not... If you're listening to this podcast and you haven't hit the follow button or subscribe subscribe button on any of the platforms that you're watching on, be sure to hit that up, all right? So you can get notifications for when the next one comes out. Yeah, all give right? us a five-star review. And, uh, you know, if, if you liked it and if you don't like it, no, just don't do any reviews. Like, we like the five stars. Or if you have some and, feedback uh, for us, email us. Yeah, right? email no. us at gbbspodcast at gmail.com. And don't forget to get those... Plead the fifth questions in to GBBS podcast at podcast uh, at a uh, at podcast at gmail.com. And we'll start that segment uh, hopefully uh, in the next episode. Um, and don't forget to share the podcast uh, with your friends because odds are if you like it, they're going to like it too. So yeah, help us spread the word about games broadcast and bullshit. And we will <laughs> be back live for the next podcast on August 18th or it'll be posted on the 19th. All right. Yes, yeah, so. 18th. You're yeah. correct. You're correct. All so, right. um, that's a good one. Mwah. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>